Well, I'm joined in the studio by Eurogroup President and Irish Minister for Public Expenditure and Reform, Pascal Donoghue. Thanks for joining us actually here in the studio. Minister, are Europe's banks safe? Uh, yes, I believe they are in the context of the changes that are taking place at the moment. We can see changes that are taking place elsewhere in the world. We're aware of the development with regard to a European bank that has taken place this week. But if I look at where we are overall, I believe the regulatory changes that we have made since the global financial crisis have had a very significant and positive effect on our banking system. I also look at the amount of capital and liquidity that our banks have at the moment. And again, I believe that is a very strong level of protection against the kind of risks that have developed. So we can never be complacent, uh, but I do believe the measures that we have taken will work. Because that is one of the big dangers, isn't it? Complacency. I think in the United States they wouldn't have said that they were vulnerable, but then there we go with Silicon Valley Bank. And in the Switzerland they'd have said the same. Are there institutions in Europe's banking sector that are more vulnerable to the current conditions, like we've found that Credit Suisse and SVB actually were? So I think we, um, I would make the case that the uh, conditions that have affected uh, Credit Suisse and Silicon Valley Bank, uh, a number of different issues that were specific to each of those banks did develop. But that being said, as I said in my conclusion to your last question, which you acknowledged there, uh, we can't be confident about the changes that we've made and that they have helped and will play a, a significant role, but we can never be complacent. Uh, so uh, I do believe that our banks are in a very stable position. We are aware of what our exposure is to these kind of developments elsewhere in Europe and across the world. But even with a, an awareness of that exposure, even acknowledging that there are always risks, I do have confidence in where we stand at the moment and confidence in the ability of our regulatory authorities and our, and our central bank to be able to manage and protect the stability of our banking system at this point. You mentioned the central bank. How concerned are you about the impact of high interest rates on the economies of the Eurozone? Uh, well, we all appreciate that rising interest rates have a very big effect, particularly in the medium term, uh, on living standards. At a time of such fragility after a pandemic, changes like this also can have a big effect on households and businesses. But that being said, uh, the longer inflation stays at a high level, the poorer we will be for longer. Uh, so it is appropriate that we change monetary policy and it is appropriate that we change budgetary policy to give ourselves every ability to be able to get inflation down quickly. So these kind of actions are difficult, they do have a big effect, but they are needed in order to combat inflation and avoid it becoming embedded into our economies with an even bigger effect on living standards uh, for the years to come. Christine Lagarde appeared to leave the door open for a slowing down of the interest rates rises over the coming months. Is that something that you would like to see? Well, that's very much a decision for our central bank and I have full respect for their independence and autonomy in decisions that they may make. In fairness to the ECB and President Lagarde, the narrative and the framework they have offered, I believe, is really appropriate for where we stand at the moment. They said they will be guided by data, they will be guided by evidence. They're very clear in their commitment to get inflation down to their targets. But they've also said that they will evaluate the appropriate action meeting by meeting. And that appears to me to be a very sensible and effective framework in responding back to the challenges we do now have with inflation. There is concern, though, within economies in the Eurozone, within companies within the Eurozone, about the pace of these increases. Do you agree that a full half percentage point was the right decision at that most recent meeting of the ECB? Uh, I believe the decision the ECB have just taken, I believe recent decisions they have taken, are appropriate and are needed. And the ECB have been clear in recognising that of course they factor into their decisions. What's the effect on you know, the real economy for decisions that they are taking? And they're very much aware of that when it comes to interest rates. But as difficult as these decisions are in the short term, and God knows I can see that in Ireland, I can see this in other parts of Europe, if we are in a position that inflation stays at a higher level for longer, the effect of that may be a little bit more subtle, but it will make us poorer for a lot longer. And that's why whether it's the ECB or finance ministers, we do all have to take the decisions that are needed to get the price increases that are happening at the moment to a slower pace. You alluded to your other hat there as the uh, Minister for Public Expenditure and Reform in Ireland. So let's just talk a bit about the Irish economy because 
it's obviously gets a lot of its tax revenues from the tech sector and we've been seeing wobbles in the tech sector just recently. It provides a lot of jobs in Ireland. Are you concerned about what's going on in the tech sector? Of course I'm concerned when I see any company or any company that's employing in Ireland uh, announce they're going to make job changes uh, and job reductions. But all that being said, if you look at what is happening in the tech sector at the moment, the employment changes that they are announcing still means that these will be far bigger employers than they were before the pandemic. And I think you should see the reductions in employment in the context of massive growth in employment since the start of 2020. Uh, so yes, I am, and, that you, and anybody would be concerned when you see anyone lose a job. But in the round, the Irish economy is far more diversified than we have been for a long time. And while we are expecting a reduction in corporate tax revenue, this is the reason why we've run budget surpluses for a number of years. And it's the reason why we've now deposited six billion euro in a national reserve fund. Something else that will perhaps affect Ireland's relationship with its big tech employ uh, employers is the incoming global um, minimum corporation tax. That was agreed back in 2021. It's not happening yet. Is that progressing as, as you would have hoped? Uh, yes, it is. Uh, Ireland decided to enter that global corporate tax framework. And I, as the then finance minister, made the decision that Ireland wanted to be in that agreement because we want to be part of global and European frameworks. And we believed we had a, um, you know, good conditions for entering at that point. But even when the agreement was made there towards the end of 2021, we're always very clear that it was going to take 18 to 24 months to implement this across the 100 plus parliaments that will be bringing it in. So we have some, seen uh, some change from America with regard to the race, with an indication of more change to come. And I would expect from the start of 2024 onwards, you'll begin to see those countries who need to increase their race begin to do so. And Ireland's established itself as the EU's tech hub, I suppose, partially off the back of its tax regime. How do you expect that to change? How, how do you expect to maintain that position when you suddenly don't have that boon in your favour? So I think it's fair to say that when many of these companies did come to Ireland, an important reason as to why they came to Ireland initially was our competitive corporate tax rate. But, you know, things have changed so much since then. Uh, we have now seen those companies who are located in Ireland value many other things that our economy has to offer in terms of education, in terms of our role now in the single market and our role in the European Union, and in terms of our legal framework. And all those things are at least as important as where we are now with our tax rate. And since I made the decision to take Ireland into the global corporate tax rate framework, we've actually seen more investment by big firms in our country since then, because it's deepened the sense of predictability regarding how we conduct global corporate tax policy. OK, Pascal Donoghue, Eurogroup President and Minister for Public Expenditure and Reform of Ireland. Thank you very much for joining us. On Thank you very business. much, Rob.